one. Hey everyone, this is uh, Royal with Paternity University. I'm here with Brandon. Um, Brandon, you you bought my, you know, you bought the course uh, a few months ago and went and got started with your business. So why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself and and, and we'll get going from there. Sure. So thanks, Royal. First of all, I am honored to be here, uh, brother. I joined your uh, university back in November, and it's just been a pleasure to be a part of such a university that really wants you to succeed. So I wanted to say that, first of all, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be one of your success students. But to uh, introduce myself, my name is Brandon. I am one of the co-owners of MRMB DNA Plus. Uh, our central location is in Kennesaw, which is kind of the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia. And we've been here for about 12 years, and um, I'm really, really excited to be here and to be a part of this part of uh, kind of paternity history. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially in Kennesaw. I don't really think there's too many um, paternity businesses out there in that area, Kennesaw. Uh, yep. So you, you might have, and Kennesaw is a growing city too, you know, um, you know, as the people leave the metro Atlanta and go into Marietta and then Kennesaw is just like a growing area and, and, and awesome man, dope. Um, so what, what inspired you to, to get into this business specifically? You know, it's a, that's a very good question. So me and my partner, we have a vision board and we got like, we got to split up by one year, three year, five year and 10 year. And one of the things that's in each and every slide is consistently kind of researching how we can make more money and find other uh, revenue streams. So started researching probably back in February, just any and everything. And then I think about June or July, that's when I kind of stumbled upon paternity. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And then another thing that we we're thinking about, what is pandemic proof? You know, what is economic proof? What is something that's going to have the best chance to survive and weather the storm? So about July, I started kind of discovery, doing research, trying to figure out if it's something that we wanted to uh, do. And then in September is when I stumbled upon your, uh, your YouTube videos. Okay. And I started watching video after video and success story after success story, which again comes full circle because I'm actually able to do a success story right now. Yep. And then um, I just got hooked and I uh, got with you, got your course and it's kind of the rest is history. So really just research, you know, it wasn't something I went to school for. It wasn't something that I've been thinking about my entire life, but it's something that that made sense after I watched the video and watched you kind of talk about it. Lovely. And, you know, we're talking about <clears throat> recession resistant or recession proof uh, businesses. I mean, yeah, like seriously, man, uh, paternity testing is, is pretty recession resistant. I mean, even with the pandemic, you know, people were, were shut in together in a house for a long time. And all of a sudden yeah. the, the, the pandemic babies came and there yeah. were some questions with some of them. So actually paternity testing took a massive jump in 2021 and 2022 It's kind of returned back to standard normal levels since then. But it just goes to show that there's aspects of it that's recession and, you know, pandemic, you know, a resistant or even proof. Um, yeah. So so that's dope. So uh, when you when you got in the course, what was that like? What was the information like for you as a person that's brand new to this industry? Sure. So the, the information is, is really standard. So in my corporate job, my full-time job, I manage learning and development. So I'm kind of big on how things are laid out, how the professor kind of do different things. And I like the way that you laid it out. It's really self-explanatory. You start out with, hey, what is paternity? And then you kind of go into what do you need to do? How do you need to do and what can you do concurrently and simultaneously to make sure that you get on a fast track? And then um, having the information there uh, easily accessible and then you're easily accessible, which is really good because I thought that after I join the course and after a certain amount of time, you know, you were just kind of going to go away and I'm going to have to rely on, you know, <laughs> students to, but yeah. you always jump in, you always answering questions. And that's one thing that I appreciate the most, but to answer your question, it's, it's really, really simple. There's, there's different tasks, a lot of tasks that you need to do, but they're not hard tasks. You just got to get them done. Yeah. And it's your business. It's your own business. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not, I would say the most, I always say the most difficult thing probably is getting your Google business set up, like just dealing with that and the tediousness of that. But once that's set up and you got your, you know, your partner with at least one lab, you're, you're pretty much set, set to go. Yeah. So what was it? How long did it take you? Because a lot of students ask me this. How long does it take, you know, after I buy my course to start making money? And I'm like, that's on you, honestly. But how long did it take you to get your first call? 
So I so I got my Google verification. I can't remember the specific date, but what I do remember is two days later after I got my Google ver verification and I turned my business to open, I got a call, my first call. Now, my first okay. call wasn't my first sale, but that was my first call. And I learned a lot with that call. So it okay. only took two days after I was verified with Google. And then, um, yeah. Okay. What was, how was that first call? Like, yeah, your first call is not going to be your first sale. If, if if somebody sells a paternity test on their very first call, then my, my God, you're really very that. good. Right. But yeah. what was that first call like? Oh my God. So let me tell you, Royal. So my, my first call, I actually was on my way. It was around three or four o'clock in the afternoon. I was on my way to a work event and it was pouring down rain and I'm heading to Atlanta and then I get the call. So I immediately panicked when I got that call. I froze up. <laughs> And I thought, should I wait and call them back when I stop? Because I'm using my navigation, trying to find this place, and it's pouring down raining. But I mm. remember you saying, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. So I picked up the phone, and the guy was like, do y'all do blood tests? And I said, huh? in my mind, I'm like, what? <laughs> this, this is going to be my first call? Yeah. So I panicked initially. But again, I remember hearing you in my head, going through the course. I had to remind myself that I know what I'm doing. You've been studying this for so long. So I vetted the guy and he didn't want a blood test. He just wanted to see if blood test was actually as uh, accurate as the swab. The swab. Yeah. That's the mouse. Yeah. Did. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, the previous blood test. And he, he, did, he wasn't happy with the results. So he's like, can I, the blood test is going to be better. I was like, right. the same. yeah, it's, was yeah the exactly. Call. And so, but you know, you got that, that practice in because people are going to call you with all types of questions. They're generally about the same over time. Sure. After you you start answering calls for months and months and months and months, you start to notice like it's generally a pattern, but that you answering that call. And I'm, I'm glad that you did that gave you the practice you needed to say, OK, well, I didn't make a sale on this one, but I at least now know how to answer this specific inquiry for the next time that it, it, it inevitably comes in. Right. For sure, uh, for sure. Yeah. So what was what about your first sale? How did that go and how did you fulfill that service? Sure. So my first sale, I got a call from a young lady and she said, hey, I have an adult daughter that um, father just called me and said, hey, I did a, a different type of paternity test or something like that. And it came back that I wasn't the father. I need to retest. So she wanted to do it just to make sure that it was correct. And uh, the interesting part about this first sale is that the uh, potential father was in a different state. Mm. And she's here in Georgia. So I mailed the test off to him, got the results back and then drove over and actually administered the test to her daughter, put it together and then shipped it off to the lab. So that one was actually not, that was a very easy sale because okay. it was, it was pretty standard. The, the most difficult part was coordinating the mailing it off and getting it back and making sure that the uh, results got back in time. Okay. And when did they get their results? Oh, they got their results. So once I got it to the lab the next day. The next day were they were they impressed with how fast the turnaround time was for sure yeah for sure. yeah so impressed got a got a, a a review for it so i was got, you got a five-star review off your first sale that's that's incredible that's I not did. normal um okay how and 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 for the people you know the people want to know you know how much did you charge for that one sure so i charged 215 dollars for that paternity test for okay. one father and one child not not too shabby and and yeah. there was a pretty pretty solid profit margin on that one we're not going to go into what the lab fees are on, on this here that's for folks within the course but you know yeah. you got charged x amount for that and you're like after it was all done right you, you know you got paid you you coordinated it you, you gave them the results and you got a five star review how did that feel amazing it it felt great man and it's weird because it wasn't so much the five star review. It wasn't so much getting the sale. It was that I provided a service that really, really helped a family. And that's the part I think that I wasn't quite ready for. Like I was yeah. like, I'm getting this business, but now I've developed a passion for it. So now it's more than just these reviews and it's all about the customer service and making the customer feel good. So yeah, yes. it felt amazing. It was the Lovely. milestone. Lovely. I, I try to communicate that, you know, even within the course, you are a problem solver. You're a consultant. You're somebody, you know, when somebody is coming to you with these problems, this is some of the worst situations that they're having in their lives at that time. They're questioning uh, or somebody is questioning them on yeah. their integrity, essentially, you know, when it comes to paternity or 
they they did something. We're all human beings. We make mistakes. They made a mistake, whatever. Okay, yeah. they're coming to you humbly to have you solve, help them solve this problem, get some kind of answer, whether it's a 0% or a 99.9%, and you guide them through that. That's incredible. That's that's something that is um incredibly important that we're charged with to do. And, and you have to handle it de delicately. And you did that and you gave them the service they needed and the answer they needed. And, and there you go. You're good to go. Um, sure. It's very sensitive. You know, it's a very sensitive topic. Like we, we handle very, very sensitive, different situations. So you have to be, you have to be confidential. You have to provide that customer service to make them feel good and comfortable with sharing the information. Because a lot of the times, the more information they share, the better you're able to help them because they may come to you and thinking that I may need this, but maybe there's another option that we can provide that can provide them with an even better, better service. So yeah, love it. I agree with you hundred percent. It's all about that customer service. Yes, absolutely. Good, 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 good. Um, so how has it been since then? You know, have you had, you've had more calls? Have you had any more sales? Have you come across any other, um, uh, uh, problems or lessons where you're like, you know, this is something I learned, uh, uh, you know, because yes, my course gives you the blueprint, but once you're out there, that's the real way that you're really going to learn. So how has it been since that first sale? Sure. So I'll, I'll be completely transparent with you. After I got that first call and uh, I felt like I did a really good job on the call. I don't think it was going to end up being a sale anyway, because the results were the results. He was the father. So, yeah. you know, you can take as many blood tests and swabs as you want. The result was going to be the same. And I felt like I needed to be honest and not say, well, yeah, I take another test so I can get a sale, right? So anyway, long story short, after that call, I would say probably the next two, three, four calls, I I wasn't picking up. Like I, if I wasn't like at my desk, I would say, I'm gonna call him right back, you mm, know? And then when okay. I would call him right back, who is this? I, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What well, I say that, right? I say <laughs> right. that. Just like, just like you said, they yep. were not playing with me. So after I kind of <laughs> got over that hump, and that was probably over maybe a month or two, because I was getting maybe three or four calls a month. Okay. Uh, I would say maybe the end of January is when I really sat back and say, you know what? I have to trust myself. I don't need to be by my computer. I don't need to be by my notes. Just answer the call. If I'm in shower, I'm answering the call. I'm jumping out. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm driving, I'm answering the call and having confidence that I know what I'm talking about and I'm going to be able to um, help the customer. So uh, to answer your question, I would say starting at the end of February, March is when it really picked up. So I got about, I would say the end of February, I got like three sales. And then last month I got like seven sales. So that was oh, my, wow. big, my biggest month. Yeah. And um, it was mostly uh, informational. And then I had a couple of legal ones, but you know, um, all been happy customers. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest lesson is uh, picking up the picking up the phone. <laughs> up the phone, man. Yeah. I yeah. I was just talking to another one of my uh, coaching students who uh, he's he has a student success here, uh, Roscoe, and I was talking to him yesterday just on the phone, like, "Oh, what's up, bro? How, how's it going?" And he was like, "Well, he was like, I have seventeen hundred dollars in fifty dollar bills right now in my hand uh, because I simply answered the phone." I just answered the phone and just guide them through it. And there's going to be ups and downs. You're going to do three DNA tests in one month and seven the next, yeah. and then 15 the next, and then four, and then you'll do 20. And it's just, yeah. it just, it, that's just, it's just is what it is. It's, it's, it's sort of kind of, it's, it's, it's slightly cyclical, but it's relatively steady. It's weird. It's like, this kind of up down, but if you zoom out, it's like, it's like this right here. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so, um, what what have you learned about like what people are are looking for after answering all these calls you you've done you know 10 12 13 or so sales or something like that what have you learned about customer psychology since you've done these sales like what what are people looking for out there in Kennesaw sure so people number 1 are looking for you to pick up the phone that's number 1 yeah, yeah. number 2 they're looking for you to listen to them and ask them the questions that you need in order to really give them the answer that they want. You mm -hmm. know, um, there's like maybe one or two DNA places in the area. I even go up to like towards Kennes uh, Tennessee area. So okay. I even started going towards Chattanooga, not technically Chattanooga, but in that vicinity as well, because there's not a lot of competition. But uh, yeah, people really just want you to talk them through it, be honest, pick up the phone and be there. You know, I had a, I had a customer like a week and a half ago, uh, again, I was listening to my music in the shower, jamming, right? <laughs> this is called Come In. I'm like, Roger said, pick up the phone. Shh. I, get the, <laughs> I get on the phone. The guy's like, I need you. I need you. Where are you right now? I'm in Kennesaw. I can come to your office. I can be there in like 10 minutes. I'm like, 
I can be there in 20 minutes. And, yeah. you know, so again, it was legal. He needed it immediately. I was able to get it to him in a couple of days so that he can go to court and do what he needs to do. Mm. So really, you know, it's all about being fast, being efficient, but caring about the the customer and their experience. The customer yeah. service is going to go well past, you know, you providing them a service. Yeah. That, that's what I that's what I've learned. That y'all are hearing a common theme. It's the same thing. People, you know, people who are on my consultation calls or they comment on my YouTube video, they're like, what can I do? What sets me at what did what I'm what we're saying right here? Answering the phone and customer service. Answering the phone. You saw Brandon just yeah, there you go. Answer that phone. Answer the phone. That's the that's half the battle right there. Literally half the battle. If they if they decide not to go with you, fine. All right. They're they they may not. There, there is a it's a half chance they're not. But if you answer that phone with a with a nice tone of voice and you listen to their problem, you don't just immediately do the hard sell. You listen and say, hmm, okay, sounds like you need this. That sets you apart from yeah. all the other people that may be doing paternity testing, but not as well as as you, you know, you, Brandon, sure. or anybody else that's watching. So and um, follow up, follow up. When I get off yeah. the call with them, I'm like, hey, is the number ending in such and such such textable? Okay, perfect. As soon as we get mm. off the call, I'm going to text you some information. I'm going to send you my Google because I got five-star reviews. I'm going to send you my website just to kind of leave it there. And then I follow up with them within a week, depending on the conversation that I had. So follow-up is, is key too, because you just follow never know. Me. Yep. You never know. And, and some, you know, even when, when me and you, Brandon, like, for example, Brandon, you might be looking for, I don't know, a mobile detailer in Kennesaw or something like that. Right. And you call, you're calling down this list and, and you're going off of how people are talking to you. Right. And you probably would be happy if one of them was like, Hey, Br Hey, Hey, Brandon, you might not be ready today, but this is a number. Is this textable? You know what? I'm going to text some information. You're going to remember that guy. Or girl, yeah. you're gonna remember that person to be like, you know what? They were actually, you know what? I, I am gonna, I'm not, I'm not ready right now. I'm not ready right now, but in about two weeks or in about a month, when I get paid or whatever, when I'm ready and I got some extra bread to to get my car detailed, I'm gonna call this person because I remember how they spoke to me. And that yeah. and, and that's that's a major aspect. Um sure. so what what is what is your what is your plans, man? You know, for I guess without giving away too much of your of your of your sauce right there, but what, what what do you foresee this business doing in the next? Like you said, you have your three year plan, five year plan. What what? How do you how do you see you know Mar and B DNA uh, uh, um, growing? So that's a great question. I would say the next big task for me and my business partner is really to because we've started kind of creating like brochures and things like that. So that's really the next step is to really get into Good. the community and start kind of really advertising that way. We have our own social media, you know, of course we're on Google and stuff like that, but we really want to take it up a notch and really start advertising to, you know, lawyers and businesses and things like that so that we can start, you know, building those type of connections. Yes. Uh, if we can start solidifying that, then at some point, I'm trying to be like you, uh, maybe like, <laughs> not, maybe that purchase as big as you, but you know, maybe have my own little small, like static office yeah. you know, somewhere in Georgia and just completely work on site, you know, for a certain yes. amount of time and then uh, see where it takes us from there. So yeah, that's really, it, that's really it, the goal. It's really, <clears throat> it's really just putting one foot in front of the other man. And, and then as long as you are operating ethically, morally, legally, and, and with good intention, opportunities will fall into your lap, you know? And yeah. so I'm, I'm a, you know, me personally, I'm a believer in God. I'm a believer in Christ. Mm -hmm. And as long as you do what you're supposed to be doing, God's going to present you opportunities and 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 it, you'll be ready for them whenever they come, whatever opportunity that may be. You never know. Uh, who yeah. knows? An yeah, opportunity. You never, know. you never know what can happen. You know what I'm yeah, saying? All so, I can do is, is put my best foot forward and work as hard as I possibly and pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah. Pick up the phone, pick up the phone, y'all pick up the phone and you'll be good to go. I need to make some kind of saying, I don't know, pick up the phone and something that rounds the phone. I don't know. Yeah. I can um, help you with that. You know, I, I, might have to, <laughs> I might message you and say, Hey, look, I got a little jingle. Here you go. You got a little jingle. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good, man. Um, So what, 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 you know, well, I don't know. We've been kind of saying it this throughout this, this, this quick interview here, but what would you say to someone who's kind of on the fence about getting into this industry, you know, they've been watching the YouTube videos and et cetera. What would you say to somebody who's who's kind of thinking about this? I would say first things first is subscribe to your YouTube channel. Like that's what the <laughs> yeah, first thing that's... I would say. And you and do go through discovery, watch the videos, watch it because you provide a lot of free information, you know, that a lot of other people that are doing this, but there's not a lot, but there's quite a bit of other people that are instructors, so to speak. 
that are presenting this information and you provide a lot of free information. So I would say definitely do your research, do your research. And um, it's not a hard business to be a part of. Um, and like you say, it has its abs, its flows and things like that. But as long as you work at it, it's your business. Yeah. You know I mean? If you have a corporate job and you put a lot of energy in your corporate job, this is something that you can have, you know, that you can work at the same time too. You know, you may end up needing to contract out or outsource, but you know, that should be the goal anyway. <laughs> to yeah. Your yes. Business. Yes. You know, so yeah, just do your research and just give it a try. You know, do your research. You know? your research give it a try give it a go i'm looking listen, forward listen listen to royal listen to royal <laughs> i thought of something else that i that i yeah another mistake that i made just now um and, I, and i'll share it real quick because i'm not yeah. sure how long we have on the video go but ahead. uh as i was going through the course one of the um first things that you said was hey establish a partnership with a collection site or get you a you know a phlebotomist on staff so in my mind you know i'm like i can take my time with that that <laughs> nope <laughs> no yeah. absolutely not Yep. And got so many calls about pregnancy paternity tests mm -hmm. where I wasn't ready. And I finally kicked in and I was like, you know what? I need to solidify this. And I actually did my first uh, prenatal paternity test this week. This, this That's test. right. You sure yeah. did. You sure yeah. did. You so sure it did. Was a, it was an experience too. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. And I, you're going to have those tests when you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It was worth it though, man. It was worth it. I was calling everybody trying to get it. I'm like, <laughs> nobody was picking up. And somebody finally picked up and I thought about me. I was like, I was one of those people that didn't pick up. <laughs> mm, see what I'm saying? She picked up and she ended up being the person that I ended up partnering with. So yeah. Now you're on the other, you see, you see what I'm saying? Now that you're on the other side, you're like, bro, please somebody pick up. I want to give you money. Please just pick up. I want to help you. I want to work with you. And it's just like, why, why are y'all not answering the phone? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, it uh, is crazy. It's crazy. You think people pick up the phone, but hey. Uh, did you did you sell this prenatal? Did you do the payment plan thing or did they pay for it in full? Great question. So I did a down payment and then they, they're they going to pay the rest up next okay. week. Okay, lovely. And, and I teach that y'all in the course as well. The prenatal paternity test is it's a very high demand. You'll get a lot of calls for it, but because of the price on average is around, you know, between $1,400 and $1,700, a lot of people get that sticker shock. But I yeah. teach in the course a way to sell it, you know, to break it down to where it's more palatable uh, to people who actually want to go through with it. But and I, I tell uh, one of my other students, Mark Fleming, I said, I remember it takes about 20, 20 to 25 calls for prenatal until you sell one. So mm -hmm. every 20 to 25 calls about prenatal, you say it's a one. It's a it's a 25 percent chance. It's a one in four chance. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know how many calls you got for prenatal specifically. Until 17. <laughs> what did I, you see what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's about that right there. Like, yeah, 15 to 25 ish. And then, and then you make that sell. So the next, you know, 17 calls or whatever, 20 calls. And it start, it'll start to also get lower and lower as you get more confident in how to sell it. Um, yeah. and, and so dude, congratulations on that because the prenatal is the, is the big fish, but the real, we know we know the real profitable one is the postmortem as well. And that's the biggest problem solver, too, is that postmortem testing. And we get into that in, in the course, y'all. Yeah. I'm not going to give out that game on the YouTube. Ooh, just no, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a good Kool-Aid right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 the real game. And, and I'm not even the pro at that. My mother is the pro at that. And, and we you know we, we get into that in the course. But yeah. Um, Brandon, man, thank you. Thank you so much, man. For I've been looking forward to, to having this conversation um thank thank you so much man do you have anything else for the people or anything for me that you you want to say before we, we conclude this interview no man i just want to say again i'm honored to be here uh, i appreciate all of the support that you give to all of your students right it's not just one there's several of us right yeah and we help each other out it's really a community of us that uh want each other to succeed we share best practices we share tips that we learn even outside of just the general courses we're going through you know, our learning phase and launching our own business, we're sharing with each other. So you're going to have a lot of support. You're going to kind of have a leg up on us who came in first, right? Because we're sharing the, the yep. struggles that we went through. So you don't have to go through the struggle. So now, nah, man, I'm just honored. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to, you know, continue to grow. I still want to do the avuncular. There's like so many other yeah. things on my list that I want to do, but I got the prenatal out the way, the legal, the non-legal when it comes to paternity test. So I'm just, I'm just excited about getting experience with all of it so i can become even more comfortable with all of it so i love it i love that mindset brother i love that mindset uh thank you for for being on man seriously i love doing these um and and to everybody that's out there you know considering it hey subscribe 
like yeah. comments, all that good stuff. Book a consultation with me, whatever. It, you, and when you book a consultation, you speak to me. You don't speak to anybody else. You talk to Royal. All right. So I'm here. You know, as long as I'm here, I'm here. I'm here for you. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Brandon, thank you so much once again, brother. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you do, you know, continuously throughout the year, the next few years. So thank you. No, thank you. I'm sure I have more questions for you. So yeah, I'll be here. For sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure.